Yo, <laughs> what's up? It's your boy Sino in the house. Watch your mouth. Now, everyone wants to talk about what's going on at the NBA, the league, and why certain things are transpiring. As Monty Williams was fired. And people were all up in arms. The team seemed to fall apart through the season. And this was a team that people were saying could go to an NBA Finals and even win a championship. Now, what happened here? Now, people was like, man, this man helped this team to the 2021 NBA Finals. How is he fired? So the man that coached a team and won the championship in the 2021 cha championship is fired. He won it. This was the opposing coach. We two years later, and they out of a job. What is going on here in the NBA? And y'all tell me everything is a-okay. Okay. We'll believe that. Now, this comes after the new owner. They replaced uh, Sarver. So now Sarver got fired because of his transgressions. So now they bring in Matt Ishba, and the Suns made an aggressive move at the trade deadline to bring in Kevin Durant to put in with Devin Booker without having to lose Aiden. Now, that trade gave Phoenix one of the top duos in the NBA. They got Chris Paul, who still, in his age, is still a, an efficient point guard. So, a second-round exit to the number one team in the West, the Denver Nuggets, while, the, you know, that was considered to be an early exit. But this is consecutive seasons with blowout exits. But if Booker and Durant stuck up for Williams, wouldn't he still be the coach? Hmm? The number one pick is the center. And he's expected to be traded in the offseason. The Suns had won 19 games and was the laughing stock of the whole NBA in the West when he signed on to be the coach. He signed an extension last year and has three years left on his $21 million deal. But that's more like the, the fourth year, so it's like $30 million altogether. So, the big question for the Suns, who are you getting that's better? In the past two years, right, in the past four years, let's look at it that way. The past four years, people... And I say that because I'm being clear and concise as possible. And you keep talking about the growth of the league. How is the league growing if people's job security isn't safe with success? If you're successful, be like, man, you won back-to-back -back championships, man. I hope they keep you. <laughs> you don't even have stability with success. This man came in when they were winning 19 games and was the laughing stock in the West. 
Now they're vying for NBA championships. Nick Nurse, Mike Busenhoser, or Hauser, whatever you want to call him, and Monty Williams. They're all gone. Now, here's what's weird. Nick Nurse won a championship, got fired. First year on a job, and now he's out of a job. Budenholzer, or Budenhauser, won against Monty Williams. Both of them out of a job. We don't know who's going to the finals this year, but they might get fired. <laughs> the way this rate go, two, three years later, you can get canned. You fire your coach without a, a replacement in place. The person they want to be their coach has already got a job. They want Tyron Lue to be the coach. Tyron Lue? You want Tyron Lue to be your coach? For what? Tyron Lue, he's already employed with the Clippers. So now you want a coach that's already already on another team. I know. Feels crazy, don't it? Well, the Suns are expected to shake up the entire roster. Well, the new CBA rule will have an effect on it. Without a doubt. But Monty Williams, where's the future holes for him? A lot of people saying that the Milwaukee Bucks are interested in hiring him as their next head coach. That he moved up in the conversation. So what happened? Why was he fired? Now we know all the forecasts and all the stuff that's going out. Now let's get to the why. We need to get to the why, right? Why is Monty gone? Is it because of DeAndre Ayton? That was just one of many things that went wrong. One, and the main reason that everyone seems to omit, is that Matt Ishba did not hire him. When you change owners, new owners come in, they always feel, I might have to change something here. Once he sees the interaction between Aiton, the team fighting, and he's the head coach, it seems like he does not have control. Matt Ishba has no connection with the history of Monty Williams being on this team. No connection to it. So now, his whole thing that he got to ride on that he has to basically bank and tie his horse to is the fact that this is the problem.
This is a growing problem of concern. I have to address it. So he has to be fired. We have to let him go. We got to show the organization and the fans that we're making a change here. We're going to bring in. So it's a shock, right? It's a shock and a jolt to the system. But they have to do it in order to move forward. They feel this is the direction they got to go in. We got to fire this guy. This guy is holding everything up. So this person needs to go in order for us to be successful. That's what they're banking everything on. I don't know what everybody else was being told, but this is what's been told. And a lot of people are not understanding the, the switches and the transitions from one system to another system. And because they're not understanding that, people are falling by the wayside. How many more? That's the question people need to ask themselves. How many more are going to be following the same tropes and trends? I need to know because here's the main problem of concern. The main problem of concern is if you keep firing coaches two years on the job, two years on the job, two years on the job, win a championship, fired. Uh, Fogel won the 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 bubble thing he's fired before that nick nurse right fired kerr is the only one that ain't gonna be fired because he's a celebrity they've had success they were a dynasty but who knows he might be replaced next year now he's the only one that's not fired because he has multiple championships you don't fire Kerr. You let them resign. But who knows what's going to happen next year with him. Right? Now, who do you have the most in the league that believes in these coaches? Who do you have around that believes that these guys or have their back? Devin Booker, if Devin Booker was a leader, which he tried to step up and be a leader when Chris Paul went down. Chris Paul was a part of the players organization and the president of the uh, players union. He stepped, recently stepped down, but he still has a role there. Uh, Monty Williams is his coach. He loves Chris Paul. Chris Paul couldn't keep his job. Monty's job, that is. So what does that tell you? Chris Paul may be out of there. First thing smoking, Chris Paul should be probably gone and might be traded as well. If he couldn't protect Monty's job, and that means your job is not secure here because he doesn't have the rapport with the new owner that he had with Salt. Matt is more of a let me explain to you how the new owner of the Suns is. He's more current. He's more hip. He's more, I'm cool with the, with the rappers. I'm cool with, with everybody. But I'm more with the younger generation. The Chris Paul, that era, it's like, okay, that's over. I'm, I'm more with the young talent. Why don't we have this young, energetic talent that trends on social media. He wants what the Grizzlies have. Like, man, John Morant, man, he sends a bolt of electricity through social media. Why don't we have a player like that? We have good players, but no personalities. Kevin Durant was supposed to be this splash, but Kevin Durant is more like LeBron. KD is like, my game speaks for me. But more like LeBron in age. Like, they're older. They're that group. You know, he comes from, like, that group. Where the Car Carmelos, the LeBrons, the KDs, the Stephs, those guys are getting old. 
Oh, they're already getting old. And Steph's 35 now. So that group is going to age itself into a whole nother bracket to where there can be some poor supportive players. Well, there's so many um, players that come in this league and it's like a revolving door. Now that you got players playing well into 20 years into the league, you've ruined your league. The league is not designed for you to be here 20 some years. You know, you can milk a player for 20 years. You've done a lot to really ruin it, to keep LeBron around and milk him that long. Now these other players are like, look, LeBron's playing at 38. Why I can't play 38? I'm putting up the similar numbers. You see? And now these guys ain't going to want to go nowhere. They ain't going to want to do nothing else but this. Isaiah played uh, like 12, 13 years. Players were playing 12, 13 years. Bird, I think, played 12, 13 years. That was the cutoff. Jordan did about 13, 14 years. These guys ain't played 20 years in the league. So you got to look at that as another factor in the game because a lot of people don't seem to get it, but this seems to be the price of sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? The price of sacrifice. That's what you need here. You need to have a price of sacrifice. I am not one to say I want to attack this person or I feel like this person is against me. And I want to say to myself, oh, this person don't have um, X, Y, and Z. They never have these things in place. Do you understand like what we actually meant to the society, meant to the world, meant to everything as far as the viewers? We mattered. Our culture, what we wore, how we dressed, all of that meant something that the league wanted to implement to make it cool. How we played on the basketball court, NBA streets. Now everybody want to do the NBA street, right? Like they say, monkey see, monkey do. We, we don't have this type of energy or we want to have this type of noise. Uh, you know, it's like we want to have a sound. We want to be heard. Monty Williams the, was dealing with the inconsistency of not knowing what is going to happen with what he has. You can only coach people the best he can, but you can't coach people's mental. Okay. Right. Why do people escape their own personal, you know, detractions? Because people are never satisfied until they're never satisfied. I never understood. I never understood why um, mm -mm, 
I never understood that. I am looking and reading this question that was in the Cash App. Okay, let me do my my Cash App is Carcino, by the way. K-A-R-C-E-N-O, for those who didn't know. Um, let's get into some of these Cash App questions. Um, remember, your Cash App questions got to be very short. Cash App will not give you a lot of space to write something elaborate. So this person sent two Cash Apps. Okay. What, what? Oh, I see you. Shouts out, Mark. G Dub. My plan growth analysis early today. Okay. No problem. You don't have enough cash. <laughs> I want the truth behind Sam Cook's death. I think we did that. It might be on the Patreon, sir. So check it out on the Patreon. It might already be done. Appreciate it. DeAndre Ayton is a baby. Okay. Well, DeAndre Ayton is someone who's having to deal with a lot of mental situations. He's dealing with a franchise who didn't want to pay him. Now he's got a new owner in there, and his new owner might be more susceptible to paying him. You know, and that's just the gist of it. We don't know. Sauber's not there anymore in his team. So now this new owner might want to pay Aiden, but feel like the coach was in the way. While Sauber was pro coach and didn't really want to pay him this money, wanted to rather trade him. And I think that might be the best scenario here because he does, he needs, looks like he needs a fresh start. You know, being here is not, something that is very productive with what they want to have done. So unbelievable. What is taking Capadonna so long to release his greatest hits? I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Well, shouts out, Kwame. Don't forget to follow Kwame Brown Bus Live. Welcome to HDTV. He was like, yeah, Colin Carter. Colin Carter to me is what I would call a sports radio hack. <laughs> I mean, he's a cool guy. Have you ever met him? I met him one time, and that was it. Um, but other than that, he's more of a, a radio hack. Like, he's the guy that sells you insurance and stuff, doing jingles on the radio. He's that guy where you say he has such a radio voice. He's, hi, how you doing? Hey, Chris. Chris Callher. Come on down to George's Auto where every car is your car. It doesn't matter the size or the person or even the personality. There is a car for you. Head down now. All right, he can do it with anything. Give the gift that gives life. Give blood now. <laughs> you know, like, this is what he's born to do. He has what they call a radio voice. Now, he's on television, so you get to see what he looks like. 
every day. And he's like a sports, he's like a sports fanatic and a hack all at the same time. Now, if you look at everything in its totality, you start to see, all right, I get it now. This is what everybody wants to see. This is what everybody wants everything to look like and how they want things to go. Right? Come on. This man actually is promoting one player because it's in the best interest of them to promote this best player. Clearly, he is not the best player <laughs> in the game. So to hear people not give you an honest opinion, you can't trust them on anything. Because if you're going to lie about this, what else would you lie about? But he wants to fit his narratives. So if you're not going to do something to fix the narrative, you're just going to always follow the wrong narrative all the time over and over again. So why should we believe that you're going to change? Nothing about what you're doing is going to change. To be honest. But this is the lie. So they repeat the lie over and over again, hoping that people don't realize it's a lie and it never becomes true. Because they've been so stuck in the lie. That's what they do over here. Sorry, I got way off the cash out question. And just went on a rant. With Colin Carr. You and Gilbert Arenas should work things out. Oh, me, Kwame. Okay, me, Kwame, and Gilbert should work things out. We don't really have a beef. Now, Gil's problem is, Gil's just trying to blow and grow his other channel and have this back and forth, and that's cool. I don't mind that. Um, I don't like uh, crackheads getting involved. You know, I don't deal with that. So, whatever his minions want to do, I don't worry about the minions. They bring no worth to the table. So... Why would I engage any more of my energy there? And I really only discuss Gilbert on One Crack News. I don't really bring him here. So, if that makes any sense to everybody else. You know, so it is what it is. Uh, oh, I will be addressing his video on One Crack News. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be doing that. Oh, thanks, Tony, two times. I appreciate it. Most of these are just giving me thumbs up. It wasn't a lot of messages. Um, again, my cash app is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. If you want to donate to the cash app and leave a question, as long as it's short, we can get to it. Mathis Walter shouts out, much respect to you, Malcolm Smith. I support your content. Love the job you're doing. Uh, 
I love LeBron, but can you talk about um, Capitol Records signing an AI rapper? Um, I don't know anything about an AI rapper. Like, if they signed an artificial intelligence artist, <laughs> which would be a computer. So, um, I don't know anything about that. I don't even know that's legal. Keep doing your thing, brother. Uh, the NBA needs you. Okay. Have lunch on me. Okay. Thanks.